Are you planning a large-scale drip irrigation system utilizing drip tape? Selecting an appropriate drip tape wall thickness is crucial for optimal performance in your drip irrigation system. There are many factors that go into selecting a wall thickness for your drip tape. To help with this, we invited Ed from Irritech, a global manufacturer of drip irrigation parts, to come down and share some of his expert knowledge with us. When selecting your drip tape wall thickness, there are some important considerations to take into account. Operating conditions. What kind of conditions is your tape going to be under when it's in the field? Application duration. Is this a permanent installation or a one and done? Equipment and tillage practices. How many tillage passes do you make? What are your tilling practices? Crop rotation and residual material. What residue does your crop leave in the field? Insect and pest damage. What pests are present in the field that could pose a danger to your drip tape? Water flow and clogging. The flow rate requirements of your crop. How does this influence the wall thickness of your drip tape? Okay, let's take a closer look at each of those factors and how it relates to your drip tape wall thickness selection. Operating condition. Assess the specific conditions under which your irrigation system will operate. Factors such as water pressure, temperature variations, soil type, and UV and chemical exposure all play a role in your drip tape wall thickness selection. Essentially, thicker walled tapes are going to last longer in more rigorous conditions. Now let's take a look at application duration. How long do you plan to leave your tape in the field? Do you want drip tape that's going to last for years through many growing seasons? Or is this just a temporary crop or a temporary field that's only going to be used for a season or two? To sum it up, how long would you like to keep your drip tape in the ground and how long do you need to keep your drip tape in the ground to get your money's worth out of it? The 8 mil tape is normally a one-year tape application. It is, on a per-foot basis, the most economical tape out there. Big ag applications that are only going to use it for one year and then retrieve it back out of the ground, they'll go with the 8 mil tape. You'll see a lot of applications where we're putting it in the ground and we're taking it out of the ground. And that 8 mil seems to be the perfect spot to where we can retrieve it back out of the ground, which is a big thing sometimes. It's the crop that you have on top of it. It's the vegetation that's sitting there and things like that. The 15 mil tape, there's two big applications for 15 mil tape. The first application is 15 mil tape can tend to be a permanent crop tape. If the grower understands his rotation and he can put a tape in the ground and farm right over the top of it, which it really has to do with crop rotation, not all crop rotations will work with something in the ground. Right. Use some tillage or things like that. You would intersect into the tape, you'd tear it all up, you'd cause problems. Right. The guys that want to get a certain type of crop rotation, they want to plant that tape in the ground, leave it right. down there for 10, 15 years, farm multiple crops over the top of it. It's phenomenal. So the 15 mil thickness of it allows us to do what it would take to farm something over top of for 10 years, right? It's going to have some more wear and tear. That thicker tape is more important. And then when you go to ever retrieve that tape after 10 years, 15 right. years, the compaction that is taking place in those fields because of the trucks and the equipment and the tractors, it's just tougher to get up out of the ground. So that 15 mil, when it does need to come up out of the ground, is going to give us that ability to, you know, really pull our walls. Exactly. walls. Yeah. If you make fewer passes with your equipment and have less debris in the soil, you can offer thinner wall tape as it's much less likely to be damaged under those circumstances. However, if you require more equipment passes or have more or larger amounts of debris the soil, thicker wall tape is likely to last longer. You have to consider how you'll be using your equipment and the land before you put the tape in the field and after you put in the tape in the field. The agriculture industry is placing greater emphasis on reducing the number of tillage passes performed in the field. Reducing tillage passes saves both time and money on diesel fuel costs. However, it leaves more debris in the soil, and this debris can cause damage to thinner walled drip tape. Therefore, experts like Ed suggest that thicker walled tapes are more suitable under these circumstances. There's a lot of push in the ag industry to least number of passes tillage-wise to the field as there can be. We call it minimal till. And so if we're dealing, let's say, with a corn crop, that corn crop would do a great job with an 8 mil tape as it would a 15 mil tape. But here's the crutch. That corn crop could take four passes with a tilling equipment right. there to completely break down all that corn, break down all the stock, encompass it back into the soil, and then be able to bring the next crop. That's four passes with a tractor burning diesel. Very expensive per acre basis right now to do our tilling. So where does the mill thickness come in here? I would need to do four passes, let's say tilling, to take it from a corn crop to a bean crop, a lot of diesel. But I would need to do that to be able to justify putting eight mil tape in there. Because the residue that's in the ground, the corn stalk, the things that are left over as I inject my tape or shank my tape into the ground at an 8 mil level, if I'm coming across a lot of residue, I could puncture my tape. Happens all the time. Where do we find ourselves buying the mill thickness and what justifies it? I can put that 15 mil tape in the ground and maybe only do two passes with the tractor, maybe even only right. one pass with the tractor. Versus if I do the 8 mil, I definitely have to do all four. It's amazing how you can buy a thicker mill tape cheaper than you can buy tanks of diesel. And then we're in turn on the equipment 
Plus there's the compaction side of it too, that we don't talk about. The least number of times we can travel equipment across our fields, reducing the amount of compaction, absolutely we see a huge benefit in farming. The mill thickness of tape is going to change a little bit. And yeah. sometimes it's just the crops that we're following in on top of afterwards that we can reduce the amount of tillage, but we might have to put a little bit thicker tape in there. Crop rotation and residual material. Wall thickness is also influenced by crop rotation and the residual material left in the field. If you intend to leave the tape in the ground for an extended period of time as part of a crop rotation plan, a thicker wall tape may be necessary. Thicker walls are better able to withstand the soil compaction that naturally occurs over time. Additionally, crops like corn can leave residue in the field that poses a greater risk to thinner wall drip tapes. Opting for a thicker tape even if it requires fewer tillage passes, can help prevent damage to your tape. Insect and pest damage. Insects and pests pose a significant threat to drip tape. Experts like Ed will point out that some insects, such as cutworms, can nibble enough on the tape that they compromise the effectiveness of the drip irrigation system. Thicker walled tape, such as 15 mil and thicker, provide enhanced protection from insect damage. A lot of insects in the soil that people don't think about, on an 8 mil tape, they'll nibble on that tape. Wow. Cutworm's a big one for us. They don't like it, but right. they still bite it. A pond startup, first time in a field. No kidding. You can't believe how many times they've nipped on it. We would lay that tape yesterday. <laughs> we would go to fire it up today. And it's like, holy smokes, what just happened? Wow. That's the aggressiveness of certain insects that are in our soils and they raise havoc on tape. So a thicker wall tape is going to allow the damage that's going to occur from those bugs, if right. you will, those insects. And we're still not going to compromise the tape. Water flow and the potential for plugging. Flow rate and water quality also influence wall thickness decisions. Low flow applications, like that seen with crops like onions, can have increased risk of plugging due to the reduced turbulence. Thinner walls are often preferred in these circumstances, with many farmers opting to install new tape every year. This allows them to evaluate and manage potential clogging issues, provides more control over flow, and delivers a clean slate for every crop cycle. Anywhere between probably six mil and 10 mil thick tape tends to be more the one and done. There's multiple reasons of why we're running certain waters and we're doing a lot of injection of fertilizers. For the farmer, they tend to say, we know we have a little bit of plugging in this tape. We've ran it for 180 days on, let's say, an onion crop. And in this onion crop, we've added fertilizers to it and things like that. Plus, we're just dealing with dirty water. Right. Where a water source could be coming from a canal, right. which came from a river, which was fed by a mountain, silts, things like that. Right. And so they're trying to evaluate, do I try to keep that knowing that I have some plugging in it? And then how would I manage that in next year's crop knowing that I have some plugging versus just buying brand new product right now, starting over from scratch? having a completely clean slate in my flow, the ability of my flow, and then I know exactly where I'm flowing. That's why we make a lot of thinner mill stuff, some six mil, some seven, some eight mil, some 10 mil product. So it allows them to be able to start over every year from scratch. They're very expensive crops. There are high density right. plantings, things right. like that. And they usually tend to be a very low flow rate, ultra low flow rates. The lower the flow rate, the tougher it is to keep clean. So it becomes that break even point where I'm buying a six mil product. I'm good at putting it in the ground. I'm having right. success with it. I recognize that I know I'm going to have some plugging in the tape and I'm better off next year to go into next year's crop with a brand new tape product. In summary, optimal wall thickness requires consideration of several factors. A wall thickness that aligns with these factors provides for a greater life expectancy, efficiency, and cost effectiveness of your drip irrigation system. By considering these factors and consulting with experts, you can make informed decisions to optimize your system's performance, longevity, and minimize costs. There's a lot to consider when growing with drip tape. If you'd like to learn more, check out our Growing the Drift Day playlist right here.